Chris Young here from HomeKit Geek. Subscribe, like, share. It's always appreciated. Hey guys, so today we're going to look at the Sylvania Garden Lights. This is a Zigbee light and it is wet rated for outdoor use. So this is exactly what it sounds like. You're going to put it in the garden. Um, the default package comes with nine garden spots for 14 feet. You can get an extension pack of three lights, which is another about four and a half feet. And you can get a maximum of three extension packs for 18 lights total, which is a pretty big space, as you can imagine. So looking at the ecosystems, Amazon links are in the details below if you're interested in picking any of these up. Looking at the ecosystems, this thing is pretty cool. It supports Wink, it supports uh, Amazon Madam A, it supports smart things, and more. And the end more is what got me wondering, could I get this to work with Apple HomeKit? And the answer is, yes, you can. Um, so I use the NanoLeaf Smart Ivy Hub. Check out the YouTube link if you want more info on that. And basically, this is a Zigbee hub. And I said, I got a Zigbee bulb, and it's a Zigbee hub. Let's see if these things will do, go together. It does say and more, right? And let's see what happens. So we'll start with the unboxing here, and it's a box. Sylvania Lightify Garden Spot Mini RGB. So these are color, and this is a wet rated. It is underneath the Sylvania Lightify brand. Um, download the Apple App Store, Google Play. It's Zigbee certified product, and that's really what I was interested in. Um, typically, you would probably use this with the Lightify Gateway and use the um, Osram Lightify app and some of their other components. But again, I wanted to see if I could get this to work with HomeKit specifically. So as we go through and open this up, it's uh, packed in there fairly tightly. So, you know, it's nothing's moving around, which I like. Um, there's some of the instructions in there falling out of the box. You can see we've got, um, again, two more boxes in here, which is good because we've got nine lights total. Uh, all the instructions are in here, um, anything, everything you need to know about it, product installation, um, how to set it up, all that good stuff. It's all here. If you want to um, screw them in, there's mounting screws available as well. You can kind of see here how to operate it. You basically plug it in. You're going to pair it with your Zigbee hub, and away we go. So we're going to fast forward here and uh, basically get the power supply out of the box. You can see that. And now we've got the lights themselves. So we're going to take these out. And you can see they're little, little garden spots, right? It's exactly like the box says. Um, you've got the power supply itself here with these kind of waterproof connectors that are actually going to twist and lock in place, which is really nice. Um, this isn't something that's just going to simply fall out when you yank a little bit or uh, or an animal or whatever kind of pulls on the cable, you trip over it, whatever you happen to do, this is not going to fall out. You can see you're really going to have to twist to, the, to get these things connected, and it's going to have a nice solid contact there. We have some 3M tape on what I would believe would probably be the Zigbee um, radio on this. I'm just taking a guess at that though. And basically you're going to then take your lights. You've got the end cap. So that's the, the, the far end where you would put the extension strips. If you actually had those, I don't. Um, and you're going to just basically untwist, tie these, get them out, find the, the end that we're looking for. There we go. There it is right in there. And now we're going to take that and we're going to connect them together. And you can see it's got this little notch in it as well. So you've got the, the capped end, which is going to go to the extension. You've got the notched end, which is going to have to go properly um, and connect in. And it's a little bit tricky to get in there, but I was obviously successful in doing that. This would be a very short review if I wasn't, after all. So we're going to click that in, get it really nicely connected, and then twist that up to kind of seal that in place and make sure that we uh, have no issues with this falling out later. So now we're going to plug this in and see if we can actually get this to connect up to the NanoLeaf hub. Let's take a look. So the first thing I did is went over to the NanoLeaf page, help, help pages, and said, hey, how do I add another Zigbee light or bulb to my hub? And it gives me the options here. You simply press the discovery button on the top of the hub. Pretty easy to do. And it will pulse gently while searching for a hub. And if the bulb hasn't already been paired to another hub, it should just work is what this is telling me. So for reset procedures, it's got Cree connected GE link, Wemo bulb. So obviously those are supported. The uh, Sylvania is not listed on here, but it says to reset bulbs from other manufacturers, please refer to, their, please refer to the documentation. So it's also not, not supported. And that gave me a push forward to uh, see what we can do here. So let's go over to the home app and see if we can actually get these two things to connect. 
So letting the cat out of the bag, I simply press the top of the nano leaf, plug this thing in, and you can kind of see the lights start to blink here. That's it. It's paired. So for those of you who have done this before on a Philips Hue or Ikea Trad Free or whatever, basically the way to check where the bulb is is to look at the, the bridge device for that particular Zigbee bridge. So we're going to go find the Nano Leaf Zigbee bridge. And one secret to doing that is you just find a bulb that you know is controlled by it. So in this case, um, the Smart Ivy bulbs that I've got set up here. And you just go down into that click on the details and you can say, okay, let's find the smarter hub. There we go. And look at that. We have a colored light that's been added in here. So we can turn the light off on this and turn it all the way off if we want. And we can turn it back on. Um, one thing that I will kind of remark on here is that even though the lights are, I'm able to control them, I've noticed that in practice, it's it's not as responsive as I would like it to be and definitely not as responsive as the rest of the um, HomeKit enabled lights, the Zigbee lights that I've worked with. So um, something to be aware of here. I don't know if that's really a, um, if that's something with the Sylvania garden bulbs or just the fact that uh, the Nano Leaf Hub really wasn't designed to work with this, right? So you can kind of see here in the film down below that this is kind of changing colors and um, that's kind of nice. So right it's you can see there it's light of lightify model um garden spot right so it's it kind of works and that's good so to give you guys an idea of the finished product um during the daylight it's kind of cool they're there right i need to do a little bit of gardening clean up it's starting to be uh, springtime but at night it really starts to pop you get this really cool effect um you can put these along your paths or maybe along your deck or patio right a little garden path and what i really like about these lights is that the colors in them aren't actually consistent between the different bulbs so as you can see here that even when it's blue i get kind of this green or or um, yellow shades in some of them it's really beautiful at night, which I'm, I really like. What do you guys think? Do you, is this something you consider putting in your yards? Is this something you see valuable? Is this something that we would love to have as perhaps a native home kit? It would be nice. But again, using that Nano Leaf Hub, we can definitely have this incorporated into our system, at least for now. Hopefully they won't disable this in a uh, firmware update later. So with that, subscribe if you haven't already. Comments, you know what to do with them. Put them below. Likes are always appreciated. And if you want to learn how to make your house just a little bit smarter with Apple HomeKit, please check in the details below where you can find information on where to pick these products up on Amazon, as well as a coupon code for my Udemy course. Thanks.